Welcome to this exclusive interview with Simple Flying. I'm Joanna Bailey, Managing Editor, and I'm about to be joined by the boss of a company called Eviation. In case you missed it, Eviation is the manufacturer behind the airplane we know as Alice, an all-electric commuter plane capable of flying with nine passengers on board, entirely battery-powered. Alice took her first flight yesterday, which was an absolute milestone for the company and for aviation itself. So I'm delighted to welcome with me today Gregory Davis, President and CEO of Aviation. Gregory, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's very nice to be here. Super. So yesterday must have been an incredibly proud moment for you and for the whole aviation team. Talk me through how it went. Was everything as you expected? So yesterday we saw history in the making. Uh, it was the first time a fully integrated clean sheet all electric aircraft uh, of this scale has flown. Uh, so the world's first all electric commuter aircraft. Uh, we were we were just absolutely thrilled with how the test went yesterday. Uh, our our test pilot Steve Crane uh, he flew the aircraft uh, right on the numbers. It was thrilling to watch. Um, I was stood directly outside of our telemetry room, uh, watching all of the live information come in, uh, seeing each test point and being executed uh, exactly as it was planned. And of course, uh, every good test ends with a great landing, uh, and we were very happy to see uh, see Steve come in right on the numbers and right down the middle of the center line. That's super. So good to hear. And um, I have to ask, though, we did see a little return back to the parking spot after Alice first lined up on the runway. Clearly, it was nothing too serious because she was literally off again moments later. But are you able to tell us what happened there? Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, you saw it uh, on the live stream, of, of course. So uh, we taxied it to the runway. I realized we wanted to change the configuration of a, of a screen. Uh, you'll see there was a moment of pause where, where it was discussed. We brought the aircraft back. I sent the technician and swapped the screen over, which literally took 30 seconds, and then we were back on our way. Yeah, it was really great to see, and she really powered down that runway. So you talked a little bit about the test pilots there. Um, what was their overall feedback about Alice? How did she handle up in the skies? Well, I think the immediate quote that we heard was that it was wonderful. Uh, it was uh, you know just just fantastic to see. Um, what we got to see, of course, with all the all the details, is how quickly uh, the pilot learned to control the aircraft uh, in in actual flight. Um, of course, uh, countless hours of simulator training and, and uh, understanding the, the feel of the aircraft. Um, you, you do gain a little bit more knowledge from the uh, high-speed taxi testing in terms of how the aircraft's going to feel at the moment of rotation, uh, which we'd completed successfully just over a week ago. Um, so it was a, a very, very uh, excellent um, outcome in terms of how the test went. And uh, now we're, we're really going to spend the next several weeks reviewing the data from the test and understanding what we need to do next. That's really good to hear. So let's talk about Alice a little bit more, because she is quite a uniquely shaped and looking aircraft, um, very futuristic looking. Uh, can you just explain a little bit about the aerodynamics and um, the flat bottom to the design? What's the purpose of that? Right. So the first thing about an electric airplane is you've got to figure out how to manage your batteries. Right. Where are you going to put them? And so with going with a clean sheet design, uh, we were able to optimize the design of the aircraft uh, to fare the batteries into the, the central structure of the plane. Uh, unlike aviation fuel, uh, the batteries will weigh the same when you land as they do when you take off. Uh, so your center of gravity is not changed. Uh, it doesn't think nothing moves around while you're flying. So you really want to make sure that your batteries are, are uh, in a location that you can optimize your structure to support them uh, because they are very heavy. Uh, and also so that you can have the uh, more favorable flight dynamic conditions. So when you look at Alice in the flat bottom of the aircraft, uh, obviously there's a bit of lift contributed to the to the flight of the aircraft from the, that, that element of, of uh, the flat bottom or, or partial lifting body. Um, but mostly it's, it's there uh, so that we can fit the 8,000 pounds of batteries into the aircraft. That's a lot of batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And the um, the Magnix power plants, you're the first guys to ever fly them. Are they performing as expected? Are you in happy with that partnership? So Magnix has been a brilliant partner. Um, the uh, the motors were they were, were flawless in performance yesterday. Uh, now, I, I believe they have actually flown a couple of other uh, aircrafts in retrofit, but certainly okay. this is the first time uh, two of their motors have flown together uh, and the first time they've flown on a, an all new aircraft. Really, really good to hear. And that's such a game changer for aviation as a whole. And, you know, the world watched you take your first flight and thought, oh, this is great. But getting to this point must have been a marathon effort for you guys. Um, I know a lot of people originally said it can't be done with existing battery technology, but aviation has proven them wrong. Can you just tell us a little bit about the journey so far and some of the challenges you guys have faced along the way? 
So I, I love the analogy of the marathon. Uh, you know, there's, it's a it's a great uh, great way to look at it. It's been a, a, a long hard push to get to where we are right now. But you know, as we saw uh, just recently with the with the marathon, people continue to set new records, and that's because they keep at it. They do it over and over again. So developing an aircraft, uh, a brand new aircraft, and bringing it to market is like running a marathon after a marathon after a marathon. So maybe the ultra marathon <laughs> of, of bringing on a new product line, if I can use the analogy, um, with a whole bunch of little sprints inside. And uh, so we ran the marathon. We went through uh, getting the aircraft uh, designed uh, and then built. Uh, and then through our ground test program, and then we went through a final sprint here to get to the uh, the safe first flight that we just had uh, yesterday. Uh, so that's that's the journey. But what's really really important is where we head next. Um, it's that next uh, exercise that we need to do to take this aircraft, learn from it, uh, and make the changes that are necessary so that we can uh, you know broadly produce it and bring it to marketplace in a format that that suits our our customers and of course uh, the the passengers and cargo that are going to fly on it. Mm, absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about that roadmap. Where do you go from here? And are there going to be more test aircraft produced before we get to the point of certification? Absolutely. So we are taking the lessons that we've learned from this proof of concept aircraft. And we're, you know, we will learn more from the plane, of course, but uh, we're, we're taking this and, and we're looking at the market uh, analysis and market studies, really ultimately what our customers and, and the end user, which is the general public are looking for from sustainable aviation. Uh, and we're, we're going to adapt this design to make sure that we can deliver a product that is, uh, you know, commercially suitable and, and still, of course, environmentally sustainable for, for, for the general public. Um, you asked about the number of test aircraft. Uh, we're planning on building three certification test aircraft. Um, the first of those aircraft will be a, 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 another prototype. Uh, the second and third of those aircraft are intended to be conforming, which means that they will eventually get a, an airworthiness certificate and be yet another Alice. So that's our plan. That process is going to take a few years, right? So the test program alone, the certification test program, we anticipate will take anywhere from 18 to 24 months with those three aircraft uh, to get the amount of certification flying done that we need to do. That's actually not that long when you consider, you know, it's a brand new clean sheet plane, it's a new type of propulsion. You know, that's fairly rapid. So we're we looking at entry into service, what, 2025, 26? So, so close. So in order to get to that design that we can then do the test program on, we need to finish the, the uh, conceptual overall design based on what we know for the marketplace. And then we need to design the aircraft and build it. So really with, with that, um, what I will say is that what's actually pacing us in terms of how quickly we do this, it's, it's, uh, it's the advancement of the battery technology. So what we want to do, Alice, I mean, you mentioned earlier that, you know, it's an, it's a striking design. It's different from what we've seen before. Um, partly that's because we designed the aircraft specifically to be an all electric battery powered aircraft. Uh, and, and partly it's a choice. We, we had the choice of making the aircraft look good or not. We've decided we want it to look good. We want it to be a, a really great experience for people uh, to fly on. So it's going to look great inside and out. Um, and it is, it is representative of, of our very near future in terms of how sustainable aviation is going to manifest itself. But to your, to your point, you know, we anticipate uh, entry into service in and around 2027, provided the battery technologies advance the way that we think they do. I know there's a lot of um, similar electric or hybrid electric producers that are looking for that advancement in battery technology. So I'm rooting for it to happen for you. Um, yeah, so we've talked about the design. Um, I like to see Alice as the Tesla of the skies. You know, it is very attractive and very different from anything we've seen before. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the orders that you've had so far. Um, you had that big order that kicked you off from Cape Air. I know you've had DHL come for Alice for cargo. And of course, recently Global X have come in with that really big commitment which must be great for you are you expecting as time goes on there will be a larger market for Alice you know have you got projections on the sales for for the type yeah absolutely and so you know first off Cape Air and, and DHL uh, and now Global Crossing uh, these these companies have just been they're, they're much more than customers they're they're uh, partners they're teammates in terms of helping change the world of aviation and they're they're incredibly valuable to us uh we, we have learned a lot from working with them. Um, we have adapted our, our design in air, areas. We've considered what they're looking for. And we've really focused on making sure that we bring a product uh, to market that they will be able to use. Um, we do actually have a, a very exciting roadmap to additional sales. Um, we uh, expect to be announcing some more sales uh, very shortly. Uh, certainly, you know, we had some customers who said, um, you know, we'll be happy to work with you. It's just uh, 
you do your first flight and then we'll speak again. And uh, certainly I can tell you, we've been doing a lot of speaking again. I so bet you it, have. <laughs> it, it, it's good. What's exciting just in terms of the overall marketplace for the aircraft is, you know, around, full half the world's air travel is, is less than 500 nautical miles. And when you break that down a little bit further, you find that 20% or more of the world's air travel is 250 nautical miles or less. And, you know, what we are going to be able to do with the aircraft uh, very early on when we enter the service is hit, hit those ranges. Um, for our marketplace, there's about, uh, I mean, it's overwhelmed, I would say that, that short range market is overwhelmed by smaller aircraft, such as Alice, and or comparable to Alice in size. And um, so we're, we're not even really going to have to fight to get into that area of the marketplace. It's, uh, it's going to be available very quickly to us. Um, we do boast uh, superior direct operating costs in terms of what, what the plane is going to cost to fly per hour. One of the main reasons for that is that electricity is, is uh, substantially less costly than aviation fuel. So there's uh, a lot of uh, tailwinds that are going to help us uh, propel our aircraft in the marketplace. Especially with the way jet fuel is going right now. And if it continues in that direction, it will become even more attractive. So, I mean, you're working on this nine seat variant at the moment. As the battery technology does mature, do you see a potential for a slightly larger Alice, like a Alice Max? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. The so nine, nine passengers is intentional. I like to say that we've we've found the sweet spot for an electric airplane um, in North America and that's similar in Europe. Uh, you can fly single pilot operations uh, with for charter operations. Uh, sorry, uh, you can do that with uh, with with up to nine paying passengers. And so when you look at the the elements of sustainable aviation, I mean, obviously it's aviation. Uh, it's got to be environmentally sustainable and it must be economically sustainable. And so what we've converged on for our part of sustainable aviation is electric aircraft. Um, as we talked about before, the batteries are, are incredibly heavy. They're, they're very dense. Um, so there's a point where if you continue to try and add batteries to your aircraft, uh, it actually won't work anymore. It just gets too heavy. Um, and then you look at how do you actually certify a new product like ours, one that hasn't been through the certification process before. And you know, recent changes to the commuter category uh, certification standards open up the door for, for di a different way of certifying your plane. And, and then ultimately going to the operating economics, you know, pilots are, are very important, but also very, very sought after and therefore very expensive. And so by going with a single pilot aircraft, you can eliminate the operating costs of the pilot. So, so all of those things coming together, coupled with the existing aerospace infrastructure, you know, the fact our aircraft uh, is a conventional takeoff and landing aircraft, not a, not a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that we use existing airports, we use uh, existing airspace. So you know, th this is how we see our, our, ourselves landing in the marketplace. In terms of a bigger aircraft, um, you know, going back to sustainable aviation in general, uh, it's going to take lots of things to change the world of aviation. It's going to take electric, it's going to take hydrogen, which, which is, you know, interesting because you can burn it or, or you can uh, react it into electricity. Uh, and sustainable aviation fuel uh, is going to be a big part of the change as well. Um, our part of the market where we focused, of course, is electric. Uh, there will be other players who fill in with the other technology uh, and, and maybe produce longer range or, or, or different size aircraft using other technologies. So staying small and occupying that niche thoroughly, I like it. Yeah. In terms of um, sales, we were talking a little bit about your airline customers there, but I know last year you released a really gorgeous looking business cabin for this aircraft, um, or some renders at least, and it just looks like the perfect business aircraft. Have you had much interest from the kind of private aviation sector? Yeah, thank, well, thank, first off, thank you for the compliment. As I said, we really, we do care. It's, uh, you know, we want it to be a joyful experience being on our aircraft. Um, lots of interest, uh, but I will say that, you know, in order to make sure that we bring the aircraft into service properly, we, we want to find the right customer, somebody who can take several aircraft, help us work out uh, how we provide a really good EIS or entry into service experience, uh, and help us understand better how the aircraft will operate in re real world conditions. So for that reason, we're going to focus first on our key customers, obviously, Cape Air and DHL and, and uh, Global Crossing. Uh, and, and then we will expand out into executive sales, uh, you know, I will say in, in relatively short order, but it's, it's our focus to deal with our, our launch customers first. Well, if you want a, a test customer to fly your new business jet, I'd be more than happy. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. We may, may take you up on that.
<laughs> awesome. I know something that our readers are really keen to know about is the plan for recharging, Alice. Um, I think I read somewhere that the plan is to use mobile charging vehicles. So they work a little bit like fuel trucks that come and fuel our regular planes. Um, and I know there was talk of something like 30 minutes charging time for one hour flight time. I know this is a long way down the road, but is that still the plan at, at the present time? So for, for the charging time, it's actually a design point. So you, you can actually choose what you want your batteries to do. It's a mix of how much you want them to cost, uh, how long you want them to last, how much power you plan on drawing from them and so on. But uh, 2C or charging at twice the, the, the just twice the capacity, twice the discharge rate of the energy in the, in the batteries is what we're looking at right now. In simple terms, that's a half hour of charging for an hour of flying time. And that's certainly achievable. It's actually, as I say, just a design condition. The uh, e-Bowser or the mobile vehicle to charge the aircraft is absolutely something that we're going to be pursuing. Um, airport infrastructure, I mean, the nice thing again about operating uh, from airports is you know where they all are. Uh, so generally speaking, you're going to know which airplanes have uh, chargers in the same way that today some airports have, have fuel and some airports don't. So, you know, it's, you, can, you can plan your routes around it. Um, electrifying a large network of airports um, is, is actually nowhere near the challenge of electrifying a road network because, uh, you, you, you know, it, it's relatively small in comparison and you know where everything needs to be. The actual technology for charging an airplane and the technology for charging a car aren't that different. The voltages may be different. There's a few other things, but it, it's, it, it's, it's easy to make an analogy there. Um, the e-Bowser or the electric fueling truck, uh, one of the advantages of it is that, um, you know, if, if in, and certainly in the early years while we're building out our infrastructure, yeah, it would give the, yeah, the, the capability of recharging an airplane that did land at a different airport, uh, one that doesn't have charging. Um, but moreover, as the network evolves and as we get used to flying, um, you may not want to park your airplane in a specific spot. So, you know, you don't want to have to pull it up to the, to the charger and it may make mm -hmm. sense to have the airplane park somewhere down the ramp and go charge it and then bring it over to pick up your passengers afterwards, right? So it's about flexibility, it's about utility. Very interesting. I can't wait to see how this entire market evolves. I'm looking forward to the future. So, I mean, to really wrap up, because I know you've been really generous with your time today and you've probably got a string of other journalists waiting to ask you similar questions all day long. Um, what's your focus going forward from here in the sort of short term future? And most importantly, are we going to get to see Alice flying again before the end of the year? Right. Well, so as I said, very, very short term, we're going to be doing the data review from the flights that we've just done, understand, you know, what lined up with our models, what lined up with our analysis and, and you know, where there are differences, we want to know why. Uh, and that's what Alice is going to do for us in the very, very short term. So the next flight that we do, uh, will be, it, will, it will be driven by data validation. So that's, uh, that's what I'll say for now. Okay, no date then. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Gregory. It's been fantastic to chat to you. I wish you all the best with everything going forwards and do hope to catch up with you again sometime. Thank you very much. And, and likewise, all the best to you. Thank you for your time.